what kind of range do you want for your car payment? You know, and I'd say, okay, this one, and then run my credit, right? And then they would do all those kind of things to find out, oh, you actually don't qualify for that. And then they go back through the process again. It's a genius model because it allows consumers to come in and pre-shop what the treatment cost is going to be and what their potential cost exposure is going to be from a monthly standpoint. One of the biggest disruptors that was brought to the industry was the ability to pre-approve on these big cases, right? With essentially a 97% integrity rate from pre-approval to what we would call hard app. Welcome to another episode of Full Arch Advantage. I'm your host, Gary Bird, and I am the CEO of SMC National. We are a marketing company that helps you create, convert, and close more Full Arch cases. And in today's episode, you are going to be blown away by the fact that you are going to get some nuggets about things that almost nobody in the dental industry is taking advantage of. And if you start taking advantage of this right away, it's going to help you get more full arch cases. There's no doubt about it. It's very, very unique. And it's something new that's coming out. And Jason, who is the CRO of Prima Health Credit, is going to share the background of what they're creating to help more people get treatment. And it's he has some really interesting takes on this that if you embrace from a business standpoint, it makes absolute sense. So make sure you stay tuned. All right, Jason. So why don't you break down what really makes you guys different than everybody else in the market when it comes to financing around full arch? Absolutely, Gary. And just to point out, I recognize that the market is exhausted somewhat of value statements, right? That don't resonate or execute. This is actually my third startup in the healthcare fintech space. So I appreciate that question because it's the, it's the question we get asked from the market all the time and what my reps are constantly narrating in terms of our value statement. So we are a fintech company and we serve as a platform where we host banking partners. Okay. And that gives us a lot of internal levels of control as it relates to credit policy, right? And being able to control the levers that are make us optimize and competitive in market. One of the biggest differentiators that we're bringing to market is literally a one app solution that captures a full product suite. So we're catering to the general dentistry, we're catering to the ortho demographic, and more importantly, what's really growing is the implant space yeah. and the enthusiasm and treatment awareness around those procedures. Now, those come with really high dollar treatment. Sorry to disrupt the show, but I got something crazy to share with you. We are attempting to connect with all of our listeners. We have thousands of people that listen to this podcast, and we want to meet you in person. We have four events coming up, and I want to give you a discount code that you can use for the next week to save $300 off your ticket. The discount code is Gary Bird, and the link is going to be just down below. You can also go to smcnational.com forward slash events. I hope to connect with you in person and help each other grow our businesses. Can't wait to see you soon. So it's imperative that you provide a solution that, A, makes those conversations very easy, provides the terms that will enable the loan to amortize. Then you're turning the conversation to a monthly payment discussion and capturing all that, whether it's dental dentistry, ortho or implant, and making a very smooth process as it relates to the point of sale, the application, the pre-approval dynamic are extremely important. Okay, and so the market is really well to that. So if you think of it in terms of ease of use, providers want one single application. They don't want to yes. handpick different lenders, you know, to cater to a to a treatment set that requires a some are fifty thousand, some are two thousand, right? And you know, the cadence historically in the industry and who I've worked with in the past is we couldn't always accommodate all those cases in one single application or one single interface. So Premium Health Credit is definitely setting its mark in the market rate related to these services and keeping these conversations very simple and in one single solution. I love that. And so I just got done shooting another podcast. So I, I the full arch advantage. All we do is we meet with people who are actually in the weeds doing the thing and getting more uh, creating, converting, and closing more full arch cases. And I was talking with the doctor and he said about, he's getting about a hundred new patients a month and about half of them are not financially qualified. And I said, okay, what, what are you doing for them? Or how are you trying to help them? And he's like, man, we have to do gymnastics. We got to have four or five different, you know, people that they're applying for. We end up having to split the, you know, half of it goes up here, half of it goes to this financial uh, institution. And we, we end up doing all these backflips to try to make that work for them. And it really is awkward, right? Like it's super difficult after you've convinced the person that they need the treatment and that you're the right person to, to do that with. So how, how do you guys, I I'm really intrigued by some of your guys's products that you guys have launched just recently. 
not only with the dollar amount that you can do, but also at the credit rate that you can do it. And then also with some people without credit rates, and I may be misunderstanding it, but that, but I would love for you to dive into that and help me understand that from, and, and, and really from the, the clinical perspective or the treatment coordinator perspective. Yeah, you know, that's where the biggest challenge is in the feedback that we get from the market that is extremely in parallel to what you just detailed, right? What my reps deal with and what I've certainly interfaced with with thousands of customers in the in the past and present, you know, the, the consumers that get told no as it relates to a non-recourse loan product, right? Example, Prima Health Credit, Lending Club, formerly Green Sky, Care Credit. These are loans where the provider is typically going to get their funding in two days, right? It's automatically deposited minus the merchant fee. What we're seeing now is that there is an underserved demographic of consumers that are being told no. And what we wanted to bring to market was what we call a pay assure solution. Okay, that's as labeled into our ecosystem where it is a recourse product, but will allow a large case discussion with a buy now, pay later model tied to it. OK, and this is a demographic where these consumers, when you know, five out of 10 are literally walking out of the practice. They have no solution. They have yeah. no payment plan and they can't get optimized treatment. Right now, I'm not going to undercoat. This is a this is a big discussion with certain oral surgeons and dentistry now. And it's gaining in popularity because they want to serve that underserved demographic, what we call underbanked consumers. Right. They're still building credit. They don't have enough credit. They've had life happen historically. What is their option? Well, we've created a structured solution that can take the accounts receivable headache out of the practice hands, provide a lot of efficiency structure and reporting around that from a servicing and collection standpoint, allow big cases to be funded with a deposit environment of whatever they feel comfortable in collecting up front or what the patient can put down, and then creating a payment structure where they're paid over time as the consumer pays us, we facilitate the flow of funds back to the doctor. And that is gaining in popularity because in the current credit environment that we're in, you know, credit is getting challenging and these consumers still need care. So this option is growing in popularity. I do understand through the lens of the doctor that it is more risky because they're not getting their capital up front. And the way we always narrate this is think of it as annuity arm. You're going to yeah. experience some attrition from a capitalization yeah. standpoint. You just will. Right. And if those losses are 10 to 15 percent, does that outweigh the net margin that you're going to receive over this annuity arm over time? So it is a decision for the doctors. Not everybody's comfortable with it. Some are really embracing it. But that is a key differentiator to the market for these consumers that are getting told no. And we're very excited about the feedback that we're getting in market and where this is potentially headed. So we feel very innovative there. We feel that is a slice that we're combating that's not normally offered in the market. But it comes down to a business decision for these dentists and these oral surgeons. Do they want to take the risk of that capitalization over time? And will that benefit outweigh that risk? Yeah, I, so, I, yeah, I absolutely so. love this. I think this is genius. I think, number one, it gives me vibes of kind of like how ortho used to be, where everybody kind of in-house financed everything. And then you just built yeah. up this huge amount of people paying you 100 or $200 a month. And if yes. you have thousands and thousands of people doing that, it, it creates this recurring revenue model that's actually yep. really, really strong. And you didn't... The people who built that way didn't fill the dips of the economy the way the ones that were getting all the cash up front from you know financing or just people paying cash. So that's number one. But then number two, the, the other thing this makes me think of is the, the dental industry as a whole. Why has banks been willing to loan money to dentists for so long is because it's a stable business. And so banks are smart. They go, yeah, we'll loan pretty much any single dentist that has decent credit and doesn't have too much debt, we'll, we'll loan you the money to open up a practice because we know your fail rate is very low. Now, they right. some people do fail. 10% do fail, right? Or whatever the number is. And But you, banks are fine on. with that because they're going to make back the money over the long term. And what I hear you saying is now the dentists have to make the same decision and say, okay, I'm going to treat 100 patients. I'm going to carry a little bit of that risk. I know 10% aren't going to pay but the other 90 are, and then you can also offset your prices to, if you know that in advance. So do you kind of, do you help them navigate that? Well, yeah. Well, more importantly, we're providing the reporting in real time as to how that annuity arm is performing for them. Mm -hmm. And that's really important because their number one concern is, is what is my loss rate going to be? Right. And we're, we're overly transparent when it comes to that is what you're going to get cents on the dollar. I tell all dentists that we interface with and in looking at our internal portfolio performance, it is not out of the norm to experience a 15% loss rate. So mm -hmm. you're collecting 85 cents on the dollar, 
right? There is going to be attrition. It happens in non-recourse. It will certainly happen in the buy now, pay later environment. Yeah. The question becomes, and looking at a long-term outlook, is the capitalization going to outweigh the loss potential? Because let me tell you, one thing that we're finding is that, you know, we break our tiers down into four tiers, right? And the tier four is an under- underbank d- demographic, right? Where we can also cater to ITIN numbers for consumers that have ITIN numbers. And really what we're learning is that these consumers where a doctor will su- sponsor a program that allows them to have have a structured payment solution and to move forward with optimal care per their recommendation, they are very grateful for that loan as a consumer. Okay. Yeah, and the default yeah. rates that we're seeing in that category are proving that, right? Now, life is going to happen to some of these patients. It just yep. is. But, and the great thing is, is we configure it and customize it that they don't have to participate in every tier. It's really where their comfort level is based on risk. And we guide them on that. So we just want to function as a partner and helping guide them on what they choose as it relates to our ecosystem and what can help them capitalize their business and offering to a patient, but yet maintaining their business integrity, obviously, and their profitability. So, you know, it's, it's a great model. I'm very excited about where it's headed. I think it's going to increase in growth and awareness. It already is from a general consumer standpoint. And, you know, as credit markets get more challenged in this inflationary environment that we're currently in, right? And lending standards tighten. These are things that providers can't control. It's things that platforms can't control, right? You know, everybody's got a certain yield integrity that they want to earn as it relates to their revenue arm when you're looking at big banks and their appetite for healthcare. You know, if credit markets continue to get more challenging, if cost of funds continue to rise, these type of solutions have to become more awareness to create more capitalization potential for these practices. And, you know, I feel like we're we're right in the mix of that as it stands right now and what we're offering to the market. Genius. So. This is so good. So so let me just simplify. I might I, let me say this. I might be committing a crime and this might not be legal. So you tell me if that's the case. But this is how my okay. brain works. I okay. have 10 patients. Normally, I would not get those 10 patients because they don't qualify financially. But if I'm willing to take on some of the risk with your guys's information and knowing that, OK, this is going to fail 15 percent of the 15 percent of these 10 patients are going to fail. So then I have 10 patients. They're all going to pay $10,000. And so now I have a hundred thousand, but I'm going to lose, uh, I'm going to lose $15,000 of that. And we just know over time that that 15,000 is going to fail. So I'm getting 85. Can I offset that by saying, Hey, I'm not going to charge 10,000. I'm going to charge 11,000. And now instead of losing, you know, 15%, I'm actually, you know, I want a hundred thousand from those 10 patients I'm now going to end up with about 95, 96,000, somewhere in there. So now my loss is actually 4% from my original number. Are people thinking that way? Is that allowed? Or that, that's just where my business brain goes automatically? No, it's a great question. They have the flexibility within their own model and how they want to set their fees to the market as it relates to their overhead, right? That's the game right there. So if you figure you're going to function on a 15% attrition rate on 100,000 where you're netting 85,000, so you're writing off 15,000, right? You look at that as that's bad debt and it's written off in sponsoring the program. But in collecting that 85,000, if your overhead to do these cases was 35, that's your margin. And that's paid over time an annuity standpoint that builds to capitalize your business and function as another revenue arm for your practice. You're still going to get a great deal of non-recourse consumers what we consider prime and super prime that are attracted to this procedure. That is one of the great things about the implant industry is that it draws a very strong FICO demographic. Mm-hmm. These are very savvy consumers. They're, you know, they're, they're at a point in their lives where they've established credit. They have the capital behind them. But as this treatment awareness grows and in certain younger demographics where oral health is compromised, there is now options for these patients. Yeah. OK. And again, that's your capitalization potential right there. You know, most lenders and regardless of what lender you use, obviously, I'm biased, biased to premium health credit. But what I tell everybody that's willing to listen in audiences, no matter who you choose to use, embrace this model offer this model and allow the capitalization of your practice to be realized. It's, it parallels an importance as the clinical one. It just does. Yeah. Right. These consumers, when they come in here and they're getting vetted out for these procedures, the one thing that's in the back of their mind is what is this going to cost me? And really more important, knowing that they're not going to get qualified is their options from a monthly payment standpoint. Yes. Yeah. Okay? How can I, the real question is, is how can I afford this? Right. Cause they don't care. They don't care if it's $150,000, if the payments are a hundred dollars a month, I need this. I need this treatment. It's not like I'm buying couches for my house. This is something that I can't eat food or I can't smile or I can't, 
you know, I, I'm struggling at work because I can't talk properly. You know, these yep. are these are big, big deals. So it's they want help figuring that out. And I love that you guys are figuring that out. Um, okay, I got a, I got a different question for you. This is this, okay. and it's okay if you're like, hey, you know what? We're not we're not thinking that way, um, and that's totally okay. fine. But one of the problems that we run into, so we 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 work with a lot of dental offices, and one thing that we've realized is that for every five thousand dollars that you spend on on marketing for Full Arch, you have to spend an hour to two hours a day lead nurturing those leads in. So you might get, and I'm just using round numbers, you might want, you might get 10 patients into the door, but to get those 10 patients in the door, you might have a hundred leads that you have to work to get those 10 patients in or 50 leads to get them in. So one thing that we've been toying around with and thinking through is like, how do we get these people approved earlier in the process, right? So I'll, I'll explain it from a, um, a different industry. So before, when I used to go buy a car, I used to go down to the car lot. They'd say, hey, Mr. Bird, yeah, can you give us uh, your old car keys and your driver's license? So then I'm stuck there, right? And then they would say, all right, which, which can you, you know, what, what kind of range do you want for your car payment? You know, and I'd say, okay, this one. And then, and then they'd take me into a booth and they'd try to close me, right? And, and then they'd run my credit, right? And then they would do all those kind of things to find out, oh, you actually don't qualify for that. And then they'd go back through the process again. Tesla... Yeah. Now I have a Tesla and Tesla, I go to an app. I go, Oh, I like that car. I want these wheels and I want this. Right. And it's like, okay, we can have it delivered by this date. And then I'm like, okay, cool. And I hit enter and it goes, okay, put your information in here. Okay. You're approved. Here you go. And I'm done. And then they deliver the car to my house. So what they've done is they've moved the financing to the front rather than the back. What are your thoughts on that? Do you guys have anything around that? Like what, what, what let me know what you think about that. Yeah, no, it's a genius model because it allows consumers to come in and pre-shop what the treatment cost is going to be and what their potential cost exposure is going to be from a monthly standpoint. So this isn't necessarily new to the implant industry. In my former employer, Green Sky, we would put a dedicated, basically we would put a what we would call a pre-approval button built into the oral surgeon's website where they could go in and click on a link and learn if they're pre-approved through that specific provider. Provider. Same capability we have here at Prima Health Credit, not foreign to the industry at all. I think Lending Club's big on that too, right? So you're, you're nailing it on the head that we want to make it very easy. And the biggest, one of the biggest disruptors that was brought to the industry was the ability to pre approve on these big cases, right? With essentially a 97% integrity rate from pre approval to what we would call hard app. Right. Yeah. So they're pre-approved, but that doesn't mean you're approved yet. Right. Yeah, yeah. There still is due distance behind that. But then you waterfall into the long app and then you truly learn whether or not you're approved and what that amount is for. They can get a 90, you know, as an industry standard, there's a three to five percent variance as it relates to fraud and everything that comes into a pre-approval dynamic to long app. But no, you're you're hitting on the head that. Consumers want that flexibility and kind of a direct to consumer environment where they're like, OK, if I'm shopping this this full arch treatment, right, what is this going to cost me? A lot of doctors are sponsoring that link right on their website where they go there, get pre-approved and can learn that will populate back on a dashboard and say, hey, this consumer just got pre-approved. And yet they haven't really started their clinical journey yet. But they're very interested, right, in your practice. That can be very powerful as it relates to measuring ROI from a marketing return cost standpoint, right, because that's real. Patients in the chair and conversion metrics, that is a very, very heavily measured data point. And it's a so key how, performance. So how, easy, how, surgeons. how yeah. easy is it to get – because one of the downsides – to because we've tested this every which way, right? So we've put the button on yeah. the website. We've not put the button on the website. The problem is when, when we run into because we want to track everything, right? So it's like once we put the button on the website and they get pre-approved, the problem is is you can deal with leaky bucket because they're like, I'm approved, so I can go to these other places in, in, in more of a mindset. But one thing that we've been playing with is like, how do we soft approve them on the phone as we're talking with them or as we're emailing with them? by just getting some basic information. Do you guys have, is, is that kind of what you're talking about? Same, same thing? Yes, yeah, similar, but the industry is limited to a certain degree from a basic due diligence and underwriting standpoint to give an ethical approval before coming in. Unfortunately, it has to remain very surface because the amount of underwriting that goes into these loans, because they are longer term loans, they do carry a very high price tag, right? Yeah. It's a very high treatment cost. So you're kind of limited by the due diligence that's required under these loans. I think your concept is brilliant. It does reside more in a true direct to consumer environment, where if you're going to take out a personal loan for 50000 
That environment's a lot different. Some models have dabbled in healthcare under that guise, which unfortunately they haven't done very well because it is an intimate conversation as it relates to what their credit history is, right? How the application process, which we always encourage the consumer to do it based on all that personal demographic information that you have to provide, and then learning if you're approved. The magic really of this happens in the clinical setting where you can hand them an iPad, they can do our app right off their iPhone, and then learn quietly when they're in the office what the treatment plan is, whether or not they're approved. And these conversations are good because in the event that they're denied on site, which is what we always which is what we always recommend, consultations in person, right? Building that relationship and that trust. If they're declined, then that opens an avenue for discussion for a buy now, pay later model and having that factor in to create annuity arm for the practice. And again, providing an option for that underbank consumer. That's awesome. So, yeah. That's so good. Um, so, OK, so let's pretend that or uh, let me ask you this way. Um what what haven't we talked about that we need to talk about that people really need to understand about making sure that they're getting more full arch cases when it comes to financing? Yeah, you know, what's really interesting to me is that given the massive discovery of the the health benefits of this treatment, and you got great enterprise entities out there, right, that are marketing this through their commercials and they're creating a lot of this beautiful smile awareness, life-changing surgeries, full mouth restorations, right? And in doing that, Still, how much foreign element we see out there that providers that aren't embracing the importance of having a third party revenue arm tied to their practice and how crucial that is at the discussion point of making this a very easy discussion and learning what they can afford monthly if they're approved and feeling very comfortable introducing the option. Like I, I get a lot of feedback. Like I don't ever come off as a as a, as a car salesman, and yep. you know, nothing against car salesmen, but that's just a label, right? Yep. It's just this. It's the wheel and deal environment that a lot of these clinicians aren't comfortable with. And I'm like, guys, you're not salespeople. You're guiding them and you're counseling them on what their options are yeah. to afford the treatment. Not everybody's going to qualify. That's okay. It's okay to own that. What's really important is for those consumers that don't qualify, what's your next discussion point that you can transition to and keeping the conversation going and what you're willing to sponsor for these folks to get them to treatment, right? With obviously risk in mind, you know, um, that's not lost on me as a former, as a former business operator, right? And then all elective environment, which let's be real, implants are elective. They are cosmetic, right? Insurance doesn't get involved there much. You have to handhold these discussions and make them a very important part of your model. And it's it's really interesting out there when I co-travel with my reps and I get feedback from my reps of how foreign this is to a lot of practices still. Yeah. You know, which I don't view as a negative. I just view that as a big opportunity for all lenders, right, yep. in the space, trying to establish their footprint, right? And, and have a market presence. The better they are at guiding and coaching on this and taking the narrative out of like, oh, just use us as a lending arm. Just use us. This is why we're different. We really focus on a consultative approach. In fact, I've interfaced with surgeons where if they'll call out like, you know, I'm a heavy lending club user, right? I'm using Proceed. I compliment their willingness to bring that on, adopt it, and form a very strong model with whatever lender you're using to provide options to your patients. You will build an ROI off of that, and you'll build very happy patients, which is going to be your best marketer in the industry because they're going to refer a lot of patients to you because you made that process very easy. But that doesn't happen without embracing that model. And there's still a lot of models out there that don't do it. They think it's going to function off cruise control. And you know, I've had some doctors tell me like, my patients don't have any issues converting or affording my services, but what they're really missing is they don't know the amount of patients that are walking out that door. Yeah. By the time they get to the doc, for the most part, they are already decided, right? The treatment coordinators are your best source of feedback of what's happening in your clinic. At that point of discussion, right, once the treatment plan is laid out, how are those discussions translating? And ultimately, if you're getting 10 full arch patients that walk the door a day, how many are you converting? Yeah. And why did they convert? Was it financing? Right? Yeah. yeah. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Did financing or what else? Yeah. Was it it financing? Is it their trust in you from a clinical standpoint? Is it a blend of all of that? But the bottom line is you're touching on every single point when they're in there that they have the clinical trust in your expertise and now they know they can afford it. Okay. Even if they're declined in the non-recourse environment, you can still sponsor an arm. Yeah. Right. It's a riskier arm, but it still exists. Yeah. I think that's really important. I think it's huge because, and the other thing I think that we're missing here too, or that we're, we're leaving out is that 
how many patients are you losing on the phones or in the chat or in these back and forth conversations? Because they're just like this. I'm just not going to be able to afford this when they're saying, Hey, give me a ballpark range. I'm not going to qualify. I'm not. And if, if you can even get a sliver of that market by having other options, you are a lot years ahead of all of your competition because it's, it's, it just really is, is huge. And it's, it's another 10 starts a month or five starts a month just by yep. adjusting and, and we don't think that way because a lot of times we don't see those patients because they never actually made it in. So you're you're making a good point. Yeah, the patients that are coming in, we lost some of those. Let's get some of those back. But then there's a whole group of people that are reaching out that you lost as well and that this will create an opportunity for them. So I, I absolutely love this. All right, last question for you. Um, if you're, 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 you have all the treatment coordinators, all the doctors who want to create, convert, and close more full arch cases, they're all sitting in a stadium. They're all hungry to grow. What's your one message for them to help them grow when it comes to financing? Yeah, build and centralize your model through the lens of your patient as it relates to their clinical expectations and their financial expectations. Literally, build it through the lens of your patient, right? That's awesome. I yeah. mean, it's just in that simplest form, have a yeah. process that caters to the mindset, to their fear clinically, and ultimately their fear financially. If you do that, you can't not be successful. And then obviously providing and be willing to promote the product set that's going to allow them to say yes to the procedure. Because so let me good. tell you, there's nothing more rewarding in the industry. Again, I don't care what lender you use. When the light turns on in a practice and they see their business capitalized now through embracing and endorsing everything you counseled them on. And now you're a true partner in their practice. That that's one of the most rewarding elements in my 12 years that I've been in this industry. Yep, I love it. That's uh, lines up right with me too. When I can see uh, these practices grow and get more people into their offices and help more people, like it's a win, 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 win. It, it feels really, really oh, good. So, thank yep. you so much for coming on today. This has been really, really helpful. If people want to reach out to you and learn more about what you guys are doing, how, how can they reach you? Uh, absolutely. Um, Jay Hazelhuman at PrimaHealthCredit.com is my email. Obviously, you can get a hold of me easily through our provider support lines. And, um, you know, it's we're here to take any questions and answer any concerns as it relates to the industry and where we think it's headed. And again, the message here is regardless of who you use, embrace an option and promote it. And this awesome. has been a, this has been my pleasure, Gary. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much.